frequently when you're looking at stuff at thrift stores, you find something that's somewhat interesting that you think, oh, this is cool, but I can't really validate buying it. It's just not really worth it taking up space in my house. But this was not the case for this. I fell in love with this the instant I saw it. It's just so cool. What's cool about a mid-2000s keyboard? The fact that it is also a mid-2000s keyboard. This is the Creative Prodigies PC MIDI. This seems like it makes an unbelievable amount of sense to have an alphanumeric PC keyboard with a MIDI keyboard built right in. Now this thing obviously has its drawbacks, and we'll cover those throughout this video. One of the ones that may annoy some people is the fact that this thing is incapable of making sound on its own, and you would actually have to use software that came with the keyboard to just use it as a piano or something like that, just without any real MIDI or music software. For me, I'm using this with my Roland SC55 doing some Linux MIDI stuff, and I can just use the keyboard as it is. But no matter what its drawbacks are, it's in its own market of being the only device that you can go from playing music on to typing on. Now, let me give you some more generic information about the product keys. So first of all, this piece I took off at the beginning is a cover that allows you to have a palm rest so you can rest your hands on here as you type because it would be very annoying to have to float over the music keys the whole time you're using it. Now, this is what I would consider both the best and the worst Prada keys, because there are two other models. The original Creative Prada keys looks a bit like a keytar, and they suggest you play it like that on the box, but both it and its successor, the Prada keys DM, are PS2. Now, those also have proper pitch bend wheels and a few more options that allow you to better directly control the music playback. But this is the only one that's USB. So, it definitely has an advantage. Okay, so let's take a look at what music features this keyboard does have. Well, it obviously has music keys. Up here, it has octave keys. Now, it has a sustain button, but from what I've read in the manual, this is actually a pure software feature, except that there are still some weird sustain things going on. There we go. So, <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. This key is now sustained. No other key is. If I change octaves, the sustain goes away. If I come back, it's still there. The sustain key doesn't change this at all. It doesn't... It doesn't start to make other keys sustain, although that one's now sustained. But if I change the octave, gone. It's so weird. This may just be a driver problem with Linux, I'm not sure. So perhaps using the original driver software that was actually meant for Windows XP would work a bit better. I may look at setting this up on XP a little later. Probably not though. Now let's see what kind of polyphony we can get out of it. Now, this is more like an N-key rollover test, which the keyboard is probably going to fail because kind of this keyboard sucks, but we'll get to that in a little bit because it's, it's all about the music part of this right now. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and test polyphony. It seems really good. Matter of fact, I think you can actually do the whole keyboard. So it does have true N key rollover for, you know, music. All right, now let's take a look at the alphanumeric keyboard. Overall, it's pretty bland, just your average mid 2000s media keyboard. It's got a volume wheel over here that's clearly the scroll wheel taken out of a mouse, including the click. It's got media keys up here for controlling music playback that has zero to do with that music playback. It's got mail, browser, boring shortcut keys. It's got function keys that you can enable up here for doing different actions like opening files, creating new stuff, undo, redo. I like that they 
put spell check here on F11 when spell track was already F7 in most document processors, so <laughs> that seems unnecessary, but just overall, there's nothing particularly amazing about it. The build quality is not terrific. I mean, this piece that says creative is just an insert that goes around the keys. That makes me think that they're just rebranding this from another company, but I can't find any records of another company with this product. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but that's kind of cheap. And speaking of cheap, the keys are just your average rubber dome from the mid 2000s. Absolutely nothing special about them. Matter of fact, they might even be a little bit worse because they're the low profile ones, so they don't have a lot of travel. That's where the other two Prada keys are better. They're at least full size keyboards, though likely still rubber dome. I've seen one listing that claims the white one's mechanical, but I'm very skeptical of that. Now, I would say my example here is a particularly poor representation, at least hopefully, of the Prada keys. I find the Control and the X keys to just not press down all the way most of the time, and the spacebar seems to be unreliable as well, despite having fairly good stabilization. I don't know why I've looked in there, there's no spilled fluid or anything like that. I just find that these keys, they don't work as well. It could just be that my keyboard in particular has seen a lot of use. I'd be curious to know why the former owner got rid of this, because it's not like they replaced it with something else on the market. The only way you could do this particular setup nowadays is to have a separate keyboard in front of your standard keyboard. Now, unfortunately, the problems I've been having with the inconsistent key presses and the alphanumeric keys happen in the music keys as well. But unlike the alphanumeric keys where you just kind of have to take my word for it, I can actually record the key presses from the music keys into a music production software, and I can show you exactly what's happening. The problem is so specific that I don't think that it's just dirty keys or something because it's a little too weird what's going on. Let me record it and tell you what I mean. Now, the problem with this keyboard is this green note right here, which is a velocity of one. That's not going to make any sound at all. It's just too soft. And I didn't press the key at a velocity of one. That's going to be almost impossible. It's somehow the keyboard misinterpreting that key press. And it didn't do a particularly good job at the next one either, because that was a velocity 39. After that, it picks up to being mostly correct. It's just Every now and then it does this. Now this could be down to the Linux driver implementation, and if I used the original software on Windows XP I wouldn't have this issue, but I would really like to use this on Linux, so that factors into my decisions. Now the velocity on this is not just unpredictable, it's also really poor. Let me show you the difference between a good keyboard like this Axiom 25 and the Creative Product Keys. So I have these both set up so that this is the same octave. <laughs> So I can just play these back and forth on the same exact line. They're both connected to the computer, they're both going through USB, and they're both connected to the Roland SC55. It's just the exact same thing. Matter of fact, interesting thing, the Axiom 25 has a pitch bend wheel, and I can use that on the product keys because it's all going to the same MIDI channel. But let me show you the difference between the velocity on these two keyboards while recording. <laughs> This one's very unpredictable and doesn't really work well. This one, though. Now, let's stop that and take a look at what that looks like in color, because it's not really showing color while it's recording because it's oh so convenient. And as we scroll back here, we can see that the Axiom 25 is a nice smooth gradient, whereas the Creative Product Keys is, like, useless. So it could almost do it, it's just losing a lot at the lower ends. So it, it is velocity sensitive, it's just very bad at it. Now, while I have the Axiom 25 connected still, let me show you what it would be like if this had proper sustain pedal support. That's one of the more common features that you really want on a keyboard, so it kind of sucks it doesn't have it. If you have an instrument that is really short and hard, like this one, then having it cut short because you don't have a sustain pedal can make it sound really weird. So adding in a sustain pedal can really help if you're trying to play something fast. Now, despite all my criticisms, I still really like this thing. It's just in a league of its own. The only problem is that it was really designed as an entry-level product. 
Now, there's one more aspect of this that I haven't really touched on, and I think it's because of its entry-level nature, and that is how many keys it has. I think this is a 37-key keyboard, unlike the usual 25 keys that you would normally see. This is a two-octave keyboard with the limits around C. This one is a three-octave keyboard with the limits around F. It just makes it kind of unusual, and it gives you a little bit more range that you wouldn't really have with a normal keyboard. Well, I think that's pretty much everything there is to talk about for the Creative Prodigies PC MIDI. We didn't take a look at the software that came with this on the operating system it was designed for. The software looks like it was pretty boring stuff, just meant to tide you over until you eventually buy some real music software. And frankly, I don't really care how this runs in Windows XP. I didn't buy it for that. I bought it because I just like it as a device and wanted to try using it with modern computers. To which I say it mostly works out pretty well, just with the few little weird quirks with the sustains and the velocity. It's if it didn't have those problems, which again could just be the Linux drivers, I don't actually have a computer set up with Windows anymore right now, I need to fix that sometime, it might work better in Windows, I don't know, but even with those problems, I'm very happy with it. I can edit around most of those problems in software, so it's not that big of a deal. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at this very unusual piece of hardware. If you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon, but for now, that's it. I'll see you next time. <laughs>